Frogs are a really exciting group. Some frogs we know a lot about, but the realization that everybody knows what a frog is and to think that there are thousands of species that are so little that we know about what they need to be able to continue to thrive is kind of surprising. But it also, it's kind of empowering in the sense that you realize, oh, this is a field that I could make a big difference in. The reed frogs that I study on Sao Tome arrived to Sao Tome and then diversified to form two species. And so that's really interesting in terms of understanding why did they become two species, when did they become two species, and what was the sort of environmental context in which this event occurred. Then when I actually started to collect data, I determined that the species were hybridizing with each other. And so what that means is that we have certain populations in certain parts of the island where individuals from one species are breeding with individuals of the other species when they come into contact. And so that's really interesting because it tells us that the speciation process is sort of still underway. In a broader sense, reed frogs are a hugely diverse group and they're really, really colorful. And in many species, males and females are different colors. And so I became really interested in what are these color differences being used for? We, of course, need to think about what the frogs are seeing. What is the range of eye size? And then alongside that, we're collecting data on the genes that are involved in vision, the cells in the retina that actually receive the light signal, and what wavelengths of light they're sensitive to. So that can tell us things about what the frogs are actually able to see. So I was very interested in this question of what frogs can see just because of the reed frog coloration. That's one of the parts that's really fun about this particular career is that it can take you in really unexpected directions as you follow one research question to the next. 